Good morning, my friends and dudes. Welcome back to the channel. This is Duty's Daggers, and we have a knife review today. We're checking out the Spyderco Smock, the infamous Spyderco Smock. This is a very special knife, very unique knife in um, a couple different ways, and we're going to talk all about it. So, first of all, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Why not? And uh, follow me on Instagram also, Duty's underscore Daggers. So, first of all, let's get some specs out of the way. Let's measure this thing. Full-size knife, kind of a long and sort of slender uh, kind of design. Let's see, we have a blade length of three and three-eighths inch. The cutting edge is just under three, about two and seven-eighths. Overall, I think it's longer than my ruler. No, not, just barely. Um, just under eight inches, about seven and seven-eighths. And closed, we have exactly four and a half inches. Cool. Let's do some size comparisons to help you get an idea of how big this baby is. Let's get out my other spider codes, the PM2. Almost exactly, well, slightly shorter than the PM2, but not by much. And then we have the Native 5. It's bigger than the Native 5, as you can see. How about the Benchmade Griptilian? Sheep's foot version. Demco 8020.5. Drop point version. There you go. And how about some classics? The Ontario Rat Model 2. And the Civivi Elementum. There you go. If you hear some crunching in the background, that's my dog uh, chewing on his bone. All right. Now we need to measure the thickness behind the edge because that's a new thing that we do on the channel now. Um, it's an important thing to know. If you are thinking of buying this knife, uh, it's good to know how slicey it's going to be, how tough it's going to be. Um, if you're going to you know, if you want something slicey, you want thin behind the edge. If you want something a little more robust and tough, you might want something a little thicker. Um, for frame of reference, let's see here. Let me get my piece of paper out. Where did I write that? Crap. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Well, that's okay. I already know. It. Pretty much. Let's see. Here we go. So, for frame of reference, uh, as far as thicknesses behind the edge go, the baby banter here is 17 thousandths measurement behind the edge, very thin. The Benchmade Griptilian is 25 thousandths behind the edge, definitely on the, uh, the thicker side. The Elementum is 20 thousandths behind the edge. The Mini Beg Lighter is 18 thousandths. And the Rat 2 is 24 thousandths. So, um, I would consider anywhere from 16 to 20 pretty darn thin. You know, I there are things that are thinner. And then, definitely on the, the much thicker side, you know, Benchmade Griptilian, 25 thousandths. So, let's see um, what we got for the smock here. I actually have not measured this yet uh, on my own time either. So, let's see. Let's see what we got. I think it's going to be pretty thin because we have a nice hollow grind here. Okay. Oh, yeah. At the base there, we have about 19. Midway, we have 19 again. And then at the tip, 19 again. Wow. Very consistent. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, usually it kind of varies throughout the blade there. That's really cool. Um, that's just a sign of uh, 
whoever ground these bevels in did a very good job, very consistent job. So that's thin. Um, like I said, baby banter is 17. This is 19. So very thin behind the edge. Very slicey, slicey blade. Um, so let's get into the construction of this thing a little bit before we start talking about, uh, you know, everything else. Uh, this knife comes with carbon fiber um, uh, handle scales. I'll get them out here to show you. Right in here. Where are they? Here we go. Um, it's kind of an interesting carbon fiber. I haven't really seen anything like this before. It actually has a texture to it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like a carbon fiber laminate over G10 kind of thing because on the back side it looks more like G10. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what kind of material this is, but I will say that um, I actually liked it more than I thought I would. Uh, I thought it was going to be one of those really cheap kind of um, smooth carbon fiber laminate deals that you see on some really cheap knives. Um, this is actually pretty good, uh, but you know me, I had to get the titanium, so I switched them out. These titanium skills were from um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I ordered it from them. I'm not sure who actually made them. I will say that there were some flaws in the construction of these things. A couple um, little holes were not milled deep enough <clears throat> in these scales. Uh, but after some finagling, I finally got them on. And uh, the knife functions just fine now. Um, and I think they look really good. We have a good stone washing on the titanium. Um, they kept these three holes like the originals had. Uh, and they don't bother me at all. They really don't. Uh, I thought they would at first, but I, d I actually like them. Um, yeah, they look really good. They look really, really good. Um, one annoying thing is... I, so I bought a, a Lynch Northwest deep carry clip for this knife. It's uh, somewhere in here. It's right here. I don't know where it went, but I bought a, a deep carry clip for this thing, and um, it turns out that the hardware that came with it did not match the the tapped holes that were in the, the liner here. They were different kind of threads, so the hardware that the clip came with wouldn't work, and these screws that came with the knife uh, were not long enough to hit those threads uh, with the new clip. So... I can't put the, I can't put the Lynch Northwest deep carry clip on this thing. Uh, it's a weird thread size. I, I've checked. All, I have a huge pile of, of hardware here from previous uh, you know builds, and none of them work. It's just a, it's, it must be just a really weird thread size. Um, kind of sucks that I can't do that. Um, I think I need to do some more research maybe, and if I find out exactly what size they are, I might be able to just buy some longer ones uh, online somewhere. I need to do a little research and figure that out because, um, you know, this is the standard Spyderco clip. It's fine. It works okay. But I just prefer the deep carry clips. Um, whenever I get a Spyderco, I always put a deep carry clip on it. Um, I just, I like them better. Um, it's not a functionality thing. These work just fine. Really good, actually. Um, I just like the deep carry clips. So, um, that's a little bit of a bothersome deal. Not the end of the world, though. I will figure it out. Um, let's talk about the blade. We have a um, CPM S30V blade steel. Um, you can see it right down there. And this is a Taichung Taiwan made Spider Co. Uh, first one that I have checked out from Chai Tung. Chai, uh, tai Chung, rather. Uh, and it seems to be built very well. Um, from what little research I've done, um, you know, Taichung is one of the better quality overseas manufacturers that Spyderco uses. Um, you know, a lot of their knives are made in Golden, Colorado, but they do have some overseas manufacturers that do a few of their models. And uh, from what I can tell, Taichung Taiwan does a very good job on this one. Very good job. We have a nice, nice hollow grind. Um, you know, Spyderco typically doesn't do hollow grinds. Um, I can't think of another Spyderco with a hollow grind off the top of my head. There might be one or two. It's very rare. Uh, this is one of them. So we have a sheep's foot style uh, Warncliffe-ish blade. 
you know, nice, uh, maybe even reverse Tonto, you could say. Um, regardless, it looks really nice. Um, this is one of my favorite blade shapes in general, and it's kind of a unique sheep's foot, not your typical kind of style that you uh, normally see. Um, like I said, very thin behind the edge, it gets very thin here at the tip. I really love the contrast between the belt sander finish on the bevel and then the, uh, the higher polish on the flat there. I think they did a very, very good job getting a nice polish right there. Um, it just looks really, really nice, man. Really, really nice. Yeah. You can see the smock maker's mark right there. And uh, this knife is actually a production version of uh, Kevin Smock's, uh, I forget what exactly it's called, but he makes his custom version of the smock. It's not called the smock, it's called something else, I forget what it is, uh, but it's similar. Uh, this is just his, des his design with Spyderco. Um, so, uh, you know, I was kind of unfamiliar with his work before this, but I looked him up. Really cool stuff, really, really cool stuff. Um, so, really, really nice blade. Um, we have a sort of a choke up spot finger choil area right here um, that absolutely can be used that way, but actually it has to be there because you can see the button is right there, and in order for the blade to close all the way, that this notch needs to be milled out because uh, it, it goes around where that, that button is right there. You can kind of see in there closing the blade. That cutout needs to be in there for the blade to close all the way. It's just how the construction of this knife works. Um, but it works out great because I like having a nice choke up spot and it absolutely gives you that. Let me let the dog out of the room here. So, great choke up spot. Let's talk about the handle a little bit and the ergonomics. I think this is a really comfortable knife. Um, pretty neutral handle. It's actually, it gets pretty thin back here. Um, but we have a little bit of a, a finger groove right here. And then there's a lot of real estate right up in here for you to put your pointer finger wherever you want. You can choke. There's, there's almost like a way up choke spot and then like a kind of choked up spot and then a choked back spot there's sort of like even three positions you can get in here um, all the way choked up finger up here in the choil choked up farther back is kind of resting your foot pointer finger on this flat spot middle finger in the uh, this groove here and then all the way back pointer finger in the groove rest of your fingers back here and even in that position you can get a full four finger grip on this knife um, my favorite way is kind of either right here or choked all the way. Um, it's a really comfortable handle, sort of weird feeling. It's not, uh, you know, it's a it's a unique feeling knife to grip onto. Not really anything other, anything that feels quite like this. Um, don't feel the clip at all. Um, same would be the case uh, when I get that new clip on there. Um, Lynch does a great job of <clears throat> making some really ergonomic clips. So that's great. <laughs> Let's talk about the action. Well, actually, to talk about the action, we need to first talk about the locking mechanism. So this is a completely unique locking mechanism. Never seen before and uh, never will be seen again, most likely, on any other knife, which is really cool. It is a basically a uh, button-operated compression lock that is reversed. So, if we look at a normal compression lock, you can see it's basically a liner lock. It has this uh, liner that uh, falls over and uh, falls underneath the tang of the blade. And to release the blade, you push it aside. Just like that. Like you would on any other... Where's a liner lock? Like you would on any other liner lock, pushing it aside but it's just on the back of the knife. Um, it's kind of on the left-hand side, and it, it flips over to the right to lock the blade out. Now, this lock 
is also on the back of the knife, but it's on the right hand side. So it flips over this way to sit under the tang of the knife to lock it out. Now to unlock it, instead of this little tab, like you see on the compression lock, it's actually connected to a button that pops through the scale here. So you can see when I push the button, it pushes that liner lock aside. Really, really cool <laughs> way to lock a knife out. Really, really cool. Um, it's never been done before. It's a, it's a one of a kind, absolutely one of a kind thing. Um, it kind of takes the, the good aspects of the compression lock, you know, the, you know, your fingers are never in the, uh, the path of the edge, really easy one handed use, uh, kind of takes those really good elements and makes them even better by, um, just making them even easier, adding a button, uh, instead of the compression lock. Really, really, really cool. Um, it's very, very smooth, works excellently. Now... Another benefit of this type of locking mechanism is it's not like your typical button lock where it is a plunge lock. If we look at all other, well, most other um, button locks, you can see it's a plunge lock, which basically means in the open position, there's a spring pushing the button out this way. Um, it pushes that plunge lock, pushes that into a little slot in the tang, locking it out. To disengage, you push the button, it scoots that out of the way so the blade can fall shut. There's no detent ball on a button lock like this because there's no, there's just nowhere you could put it. But on this knife, since it's actually a type of a liner lock, you can have a detent ball. Um, that makes for a really nice, crisp deployment of the blade. That you don't normally get with button locks. Um, you know, all other button locks sort of feel kind of mushy. You don't get that crisp breakaway because there's not a detent ball sitting in a hole. Um, you don't get that nice crisp pop. Um, there are some button locks that do it better than others. The pie right here does a, a pretty darn good job of kind of mimicking um, a real detent. Um, you know, good thumb stud action. Um, but you just can't beat this because it does have an actual detent ball. Really nice and crisp detent. Um, so that's another reason it's a, kind of a one of a kind. It's a button lock with a crisp detent, which is very, you know, rare. Uh, one of it's one of a kind in that in that sense as well. So really, really just awesome. Really awesome. I love button locks. My my main complaint with them it always is they feel a little bit mushy. So that problem is fixed on the smock here. Um, let's talk about deployment. We have the you know signature spidey hole, which can be easily, easily reverse flicked and thumb flicked. And we also have a flipper tab. Um, Spiderco is not really usually big on flipper tabs. They do have a couple models with them. Um, typically they don't though, so that's kind of cool too. Another reason why this knife is pretty unique, Spider Co. with a flipper tab. Um, and the way they do this is just fantastic. Um, they don't have this thing poking out of the back of the knife. They do it kind of as a 90 degree piece of the tang here. Um, so it maintains its very slim profile, slides in and out of the pocket very easily, and it really works well. It really, really works well. Um, my only kind of nitpick is they could have put some jimping on the top of this. Um, if my finger isn't in the right spot, I can kind of slip off of it sometimes. Um, you just have to put your finger a little bit higher, and then it's really easy to get every time. Um, but I think a little bit of jimping would be pretty good up there. Um, nothing too aggressive, but just a little bit to help grab your finger would be nice. Um, but I really love this flipper tab. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the EMP EDC, uh, you know, the Nimbles, sort of similar 90 degree flipper tab, even on the Cormorant too, kind of a 90 degree flipper tab sticking out there. Um, I think it's a great way to do a flipper tab. Um, it's just unobtrusive, out of the way, uh, and works really well. So, action, fantastic. Um, now, 
<clears throat> this knife comes with a two detents installed. One is the one that uh, gives you resistance when you're flipping it. Um, the second one is basically there so that you cannot push the button down and use gravity to flick the knife out. With most button locks, you can hold this button down and it releases the blade. So you can use gravity to flick the knife out. Um, that's just how most all button locks are. That's just how it is. Uh, for some reason, Spyderco decided they didn't want us to be able to do that. Um, probably a way to get around uh, gravity knife laws, if I were to guess. Um, whatever reason, they put a second detent in here so that you can't push this button down and swing the knife out because there's a detent ball uh, holding it in. Um, that didn't really affect the flipping action because you would just overcome it with the flipper tab or, you know, the uh, the spidey hole. But it kind of uh, it kind of slowed down the knife. Um, it slowed down the the closing action was a bit rougher, um, and it's kind of cool to be able to to swing the blade out like that. Um, luckily, it's really easy to remove. Very very easy. Um, I just popped it out, put the knife back together, and. <laughs> It functions so much better now. Um, it's just a lot smoother. You know, there's less friction in there. Before it had two detent balls rubbing on the tang. Now it has only one. So just really nice and smooth. Um, I'm sure Spider Code did that on purpose as well. If they didn't want us to remove it, they would have made it much more difficult to take out. Um, but as it is, really easy to pop out. Really improves the knife uh, as well. Um... This knife was a nightmare to take apart, I will say that. Um, I attempted to film a disassembly video of me installing these scales. I had to do a lot of cuts, it was a nightmare, and I was actually left over with a piece. And I can show you what piece that is here. Um, and maybe one of you will actually know what it is and why the knife can function perfectly without it in there. Uh, because basically what happened is at the beginning of the video, I was saying that whoever made these scales didn't mill out a little slot in here deep enough. And, uh, that slot was actually what, uh, was supposed to accommodate this little tab. I'm trying to find it here. Hang on. Is that it? Nope. Is that it? Hang on here. Let me find it. I'm hoping one of you will know what it is and hopefully tell me why it's there or how it is the knife is functioning without it in there. I just I don't I have no idea. There it is. So there's this little tab and I couldn't figure out what it was for. Even when the knife was apart, I couldn't really figure it out. Uh, it might have something to do with the second detent, I'm not sure. But basically <clears throat> it's right in here. So this is the left scale. Uh, or wait, no. Is it the other one? Yeah, I think it's on this side. Yeah, it's on the right-hand scale. So it's right in here. You can see there's this, um, this uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, hole milled um, <clears throat> part of the way down deep into the scale. And this little thing is supposed to sit right in there like that. Just like that, um, you can see it's kind of stepped. You know, this part's thicker, and then it steps down thinner. This wider part is supposed to sit flush on the inside of the scale. Um, just like that. Nice and flush. On this new one, it was sitting up a little bit. It was kind of up like this, and it was, it was not allowing the scales to sit flushly on the liners. So the knife was not going together correctly with that in there. <clears throat> so I took it out, I put the knife together, and it turns out I guess I didn't need it because the knife works just fine without it. Um, I couldn't figure out what it was for. I really couldn't. Um, if anyone knows, please tell me uh, if, it, if I should have it in there, if I need to send these scales back um, to make sure that I get this piece in. Let me know. I, I really don't know. Um, I guess the point of the story is 
<clears throat> there's a lot of weird stuff going on inside this knife that I, I still don't quite understand. Very complex knife. Um, I think a very innovative knife. Uh, you know, although it's really hard to take apart, you can tell that um, Mr. Smock, you know, paid a lot of attention to a lot of little tiny details inside this knife to make it as good as it is. Um, you know, there's internal stop pins, there's different tracks that it runs in, there, there's, you know, the second D10, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on inside here. Um, which kind of adds to, you know, the mystery, I guess, because I don't understand all how it works. And it adds to just the awesomeness and uniqueness of the knife. Um, that being said, I hope I never have to take it apart again, because it really was uh, stressful and... Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't want to have to do it ever again. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Um, I really recommend this knife if you can get your hands on one. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, I'm not totally clear on what Spyderco's deal is with the smock, if they are still making them, if they have stopped making them, if they're just making them in limited quantities. I, I don't know, but I do know that they don't become available that often, uh, and when they do, they're gone really quickly, uh, because it's a popular knife, and a really cool knife. Um, I was lucky enough to stab, uh, snag one. Uh, if you're looking for one, what I would do is sign up for the, uh, the subreddit called Blades in Stock. Um, it is a subreddit where if blades become available on a, on a distributor's website, um, Someone will make a post in there letting you know that there's some available. Um, I've snagged uh, quite a few knives uh, that way. You can do that, or you can sign up for notifications from the distributor directly. Sign up for email notifications. Um, so there's a couple ways to do it. I would recommend the Reddit because uh, it seems to be a bit more reliable than the uh, the emails from the distributor. They, For some reason, I always seem to get them a little bit too late. By the time I get the email, the knives are already sold out. Um, so I would I would check out that subreddit if I were you. It's called Blades in Stock, or maybe Knives in Stock. I forget. It's one of those two. Um, but if you really want to get a smock, you can get one. You just have to spend a little bit of time and patience, and um, you can get one. That's about it, folks. I really love the knife. Um, I've always wanted it ever since I first saw it back when I first started collecting. And uh, this will never leave my collection. I think it looks amazing, um, especially with the titanium. Just such a wicked cool looking knife. Um, very unique, absolutely one of a kind locking mechanism. Um, the very rare Spyderco hollow grind. The rare Spyderco flipper tab. Like I said, unique locking mechanism. Um, just a very, very cool knife. Very cool knife. Thanks for watching, folks. Um, sign up to become a channel member. There are different tiers and perks that you get, um, such as channel only or channel member only videos once a week. Um, channel member shoutouts. You will get um, uh, exclusive emojis to use in the live shows. Um, you will get a little emblem beside your name when you're commenting on my videos, letting people know that you're a member. Um, it's a pretty sweet deal. I got two two channel members already. Shout out to Nate and um, shout out to Crap. What was his name? Oh, I forgot who the other guy was. I'm so sorry, man. I'll put it. I'll put some text on the screen right now, shouting out the channel members. Um, I'm just blanking right now. Um, but I really, really appreciate it, guys. You are very much appreciated. Um, and yeah, follow suit, guys. Let's get a, a nice little group of channel members. Pretty sweet. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.